So these percussion sounds were all made with synthesizers. Um, it's it's something I stumbled upon this patch uh, a while back, and uh, I kind of dove in today and I kind of reverse engineered my own work because uh, this was a whole bunch of experimentation and trial and error, and now I kind of got it figured out like what exactly is going on and why why it works. So I'm going to show you today how to make uh, realistic percussion sounds with uh, operators. So uh, let's dive in. Um, you can probably also use any other uh, FM synth. So I'm going to start off with a MIDI note, just like a G or something. And um, I'm going to, first of all, choose this algorithm. Now, the reason I choose this algorithm is um, because I'm going to use all of all of these three oscillators, each for like a specific uh, function. And um, when you have them all in a line like this, uh, they all, or sort of this one influences all the ones below it, uh, which is not what I want. Um, I don't want these, the functions of these operators to interfere with each other. Um, so I'm gonna start with a short note. I'm just gonna draw in an envelope about like, oh, whoops, that's wrong. <laughs> Something like that. Let's reset that. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna head into this oscillator section and I'm gonna draw in some harmonics. And I do it pretty randomly. Um, just to kind of give a, a bit more of a, like I, I don't want it to be a super tonal sound in the end because that tends to sound kind of fake. So something like this probably works. Um, it's also nice to have the pitch moving around a bit, uh, just for the sake of having the sound evolve a bit. And I, so I tend to do a negative pitch envelope. Uh, for a lot of drums, it's recommended you do like a, a positive one so the pitch goes down over time. But here I do a negative one because we're gonna sort out the transient later. We'll use one of the operators for it. So. With that out of the way, I'm gonna go to this uh, the second uh, operator and introduce a little bit of that into our sound and maybe give it kind of a funny ratio. Just to make those sounds slightly less harmonic. So basically these first two, this is like the main sound source that we hear. And then this one is just to add a little bit more of an inharmonic edge to the sound. So the next operator, I'm gonna set that to noise looped. Um, and this oscillator is really gonna drive us all the way from something with a detectable pitch to something that's just completely it's kind of noisy, but it doesn't sound like noise if you get me. So that's a really shitty explanation, but you can kind of see what I mean, right? Maybe play with the uh, phase a little bit, get some different flavors. I think this is already a pretty good start. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the final uh, operator and I'm going to use this for the transients. So I'm just going to set this to be really short, like about 10 to 20 milliseconds. I'm just going to find a nice place for that to sit. Um, now some, some tips here is, um, as a rule of thumb, uh, if you move the frequency to be higher, um, the sound also becomes brighter. And if you move the level to be higher, the sound becomes brighter as well. Um, so what I just did is I moved the frequency up and then it was becoming too bright, but rather than moving the frequency down, uh, I moved the level down. And the reason I do this is you kind of get two controls that do kind of the same thing, but they don't do exactly the same thing, right? So you get kind of um, different flavors of the same sound. Um, 
So when I'm twiddling with these, I'm just adjusting it to be as bright as I want it to be, while also having a flavor that I like, like a texture that I like. Now, I want it to be a little bit more of a punchy attack, but uh, I can't quite get that here, so I'm going to adjust the phase to something like this. Yeah, because adjusting the phase in uh, FM synthesis can also make kind of a big difference to the sound. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the uh, filter. I'm going to make it a high pass filter. And um, there's a couple of reasons to do this. Uh, one being, first of all, this filter kind of gives us some nice control over the sound. Uh, because particularly if you're going for kind of a rim shot sort of sound, uh, it can be nice to boost around like two to 300 hertz. Um, and also uh, with FM synthesis, it's uh, not very, it's, it's quite common to create a patch that generates some DC offsets. So some really low end stuff that you really don't want in your sound. So having the high pass filter kind of cuts that out. And another reason to use a filter is for the shaper. I'm also going to change the filter type to OSR so we get the filter drive. I'm just gonna sweep across here, try to find some nice, some nice sounds in here. Yeah, I think right around there is kind of, kind of a nice. Yeah, kind of a nice thing to boost. You want to be careful if you turn up this resonance too high. You can kind of add some tonality into the sound, which I generally try to avoid because like when you smack like two random objects together, it generally isn't a very tonal sound. So it's not very realistic if you have like a super tonal sound. It can be cool to have like those tonal percussion things, but um, I don't want to end up sounding like an 808 drum machine. Although some people do and that's fine, but it's not for me. Uh, so that's that's fine. So I'm just gonna give it a bit more grit. Uh, make sure we're not clipping, because hard clipping on these kinds of sounds sounds really terrible. Uh, and then I can also use the uh, wave shaper to soft clip a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm gonna move out of the synth and uh, start doing some EQ work. Now, right off the bat, I think I have a faint sense that there is some kind of thing ringing out here that... Yeah, right there. Like if I boost that and then turn it off. You can kind of hear how it's still there. So I'm just going to dip that down a little bit like that. Uh, little boost there will do the job. Uh, and now I'm going to add some reverb. Uh, now the reverb is really nice because I'm not going to use it as a reverb. I'm going to use it as kind of a sound design tool. So uh, because the reverb kind of diffuses the sound, we can use it to kind of create a copy of the sound that sounds similar, but not exactly the same. And then when we layer that in and we kind of glue them together with compression, uh, we kind of get an end result that's more, more complex and more realistic sounding. So that's way too long. <laughs> I generally go for very short. Uh, and also kind of mono, because when you think about it, our percussion is just a single 
sound source, right? It's not like a choir where there's multiple sources of sound all at a different place in space. Also, in general with the reverb, um, try to avoid turning on the spin and the chorus because they run internal LFOs. You can set the frequency here. And um, because they run LFOs, they're kind of going to produce inconsistent results. And that's going to be particularly bad for your transient. Turning the shape down also kind of helps make it sound more like an actual sound than just a reverb. And same goes for the density knob. Yeah, something like this will do. So. I'm gonna keep it like this and then just compress it really, really hard. Okay, so the reverb can sometimes bring out uh, more tonal bits, which is not nice, but you know, what are you gonna do, right? do some uh, transient shaping first of all with transpire uh, clipping doesn't sound too nice but this will do um, and now I'm gonna adjust this knob down so this basically kind of acts like a gate sort of uh, it basically cuts out the tail after the transient because right now the reverb was ringing out a little longer than I would like, so... That solves that issue. Okay, I'm gonna run a little bit more EQ because the top end is a little bit too sharp. Yeah, like this kind of 10k stuff. Okay, that's a lot nicer. Uh, now, here's the real powerhouse. Um, I use uh, dynamic EQing to really uh, sort of change the sound of the transient. Um, so essentially dynamic EQing is just uh, kind of a compressor, but rather than turning down the volume of, um, of the entire sound, it turns down the volume of like EQ bands. You can also turn it up, I guess. Um, but we're gonna turn it down today. So around two to three K is a really nice area for transients on these types of sounds. So I'm gonna set here and then dial it in with the threshold. threshold. Um, do quite a short release and uh, a tech of a few milliseconds. So you can see how like when the sound first comes in, there's a big boost here, but then as the sound hits, the boost dips down. So the transient is boosted uh, around these frequencies compared to the rest of the sound. The high end is still a bit too much. So something like that. Maybe I should turn that into a shelf like that. Now, something I'm also noticing now is that these low frequencies are ringing out a little bit too long. So I'm gonna try to kind of adjust that with the reverb. That's not really working. Uh, so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna also dynamic EQ that. 
So try to find kind of which frequencies those are. It's around here, so. I'm going to give this one a little bit of a longer release because I'm trying to kind of remove the tail so I don't want this EQ bend to come up before the end of the sound. So that's pretty close. Now as a final finishing touch, it's always nice to add some very subtle reverbs, so maybe... Uh... something like that. And well, there you have it. Um, <laughs> good luck uh, trying this technique because it's uh, it's quite tough. It requires a lot of uh, listening to the sound you're making and knowing what to listen for, which uh, is really something that you have to develop by practice. Um, I've tried to tell you everything I know about it. Um, so yeah, big shout out to my Discord server. Without this, I probably would have never made this video. Um, also, I reached 100 subscribers after my last video, which is super cool. So uh, I put together a little sample pack. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything, oh, whoops, all sorts of different sounds. Um, so whatever kind of music you make, it's probably interesting. Uh, links in the description, you can download it for free. And uh, yeah, if you like this, hit the subscribe button. I'll make more videos like this in the future. And thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Uh,